Hello and welcome back to recitation. So today the problem I'd like to work with you is about uh, taking partial derivatives in the presence of constraints. So this is a, this is a, a pretty subtle business, so, so, uh, so take your time when you work these problems. So, so what we have is we have a, this function w, and it's a function of four variables, x, y, z, and t. Okay? But it's not really a function of these four variables because we have a constraint. So we want to uh, study how w changes uh, as we vary the, uh, the parameters, except that we have imposed this constraint here so that really we, we kind of only have three variables because we have four variables and one constraint. So that's, uh, that's what uh, partial derivatives uh, with constraints help us do. So, this, so let's explain first the notation. Okay? So it says partial w, partial z, and then we have the subscripts x and y. So what's important about this notation is not what you see as much as what you don't see. What you don't see is the variable t. Okay? So what this notation means is, as always, the uh, denominator in our, in our derivative expression, uh, partial z here, that means that we want to uh, vary z. And we want to see how w changes as we vary z. And uh, the x and y here mean that we want to keep x and y fixed. So this so if we didn't have a constraint, I, I, this x and y here would be superfluous because by partial derivative we always mean to keep the other unlisted variables uh, unchanged. However, the fact that t is missing here, it means that, so if you think about it, if we vary z and we keep x and y fixed, then t also is varying, right, because we have this constraint here. And so it wouldn't make sense for me to write, uh, to, to ask you to compute the partial derivative of w in z varying x, y, and t because, excuse me, keeping x, y, and t fixed because then there would be no room for z to vary. Okay, so this notation means that uh, z is going to be allowed to vary, but it's going to be, it's going to vary in a way that we're just going to ignore. So you'll, we'll see how this works out in the problem. So what we're really interested in is making sure that x and y stay fixed and that um, z varies. And, uh, and then we're going to need to, when we do some algebra, we're going to need to get rid of any mention of the, of the variable t. Okay. So the first way that we're going to uh, work this out is using total differentials. And I like to use total differentials when I'm uh, on new ground because um, they're not the most computationally ef uh, effective because they involve computing all the derivatives that we might possibly need in sight. So they're not the most efficient computationally. Uh, but if you, if you go ahead and compute the, the total differentials, then um, all the other computations that you have to do are just substitution. So it really just becomes linear algebra, and that's what I like about it. Um, in part B, we'll see a shortcut using uh, implicit differentiation and the chain rule. And uh, this is going to be a little bit tricky. So we need to, we have these two equations. We need to turn them both into differential equations. And uh, so we'll do that using a combination of implicit differentiation and the chain rule. So I'll, uh, I'll let you pause the video and uh, get started on these problems. And uh, you can check back, and we'll work it out together. OK, welcome back. So let's start by doing A. Let's start uh, with, with, the pro with problem A. So we have total differentials is, is the suggested uh, way to attack this. So why don't we just start computing the, dif the total differentials that we know. So we have two equations, uh, w in relation to the other variables and the constraint equation. And we, what we first want to do is just take the total differential of both of those equations to get started. So uh, we can take the first one and it tells us that dw is equal to, okay, so we have 3 x squared y dx plus uh, x cubed dy minus 2zt dz minus uh, z squared dt. Okay. Now right away we can simplify, these, uh, simplify this equation. So this is the total differential. But we have to remember that in, in the setting we're interested in, x and y are held fixed. 
And so holding x and y fi fixed means that the differentials dx and dy are both set to 0. So that lets us uh, rewrite this first differential equation is just uh, dw equals minus 2z t dz minus z squared dt. So that's our first equation that we get. Let me just check with my notes to make sure. That's right. OK. And uh, so now we have the constraint equation from the original statement of the problem, and we need to take its differential. So uh, we get, so on the one hand, we get x dy plus y dx. That's the different total differential of the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, we have uh, t dz plus z dt. Okay? And uh, now we notice that now the left hand side of this equation is just 0 for the same reason. dy and dx are, are being held fixed. So the relation that we end up getting is we get that dt is equal to uh, minus t over z dz by just doing straightforward algebra. OK. So uh, with that in hand now, uh, we can, uh, so, so remember I mentioned in the beginning that our goal was, uh, so from the very beginning, we knew that if you varied z, because of our constraint, you're going to be forced to be, to be varying t. And uh, that's exactly what this equation says, doesn't it? We got this by just taking the differential of the constraint, and it says if you vary z, you have to vary t in an in a appropriate way, and that's what this coefficient tells us. So uh, what we're really interested in is how does w vary in terms of z here? And so we want to get rid of this dt here. And uh, in fact, we can by using the constraint. So this tells us, so combining this equation with this equation, we get that dw here is equal to, OK, so we have minus 2z t dz. And then we have minus, OK, z squared times another minus times t over z. So this all becomes a plus z t dz. So all I did is I plugged in for dt using our formula here. And so this all together is equal to just minus zt dz. And that tells us that the partial derivative that we're after is just this coefficient, right? The partial derivative is just defined to be the coefficient of the differential when, once you work everything out. And so this is minus zt. OK, so that's A. So now let's see if we can, uh, if we can uh, use uh, some tricks to make the computation a bit shorter. So the tricks that we're going to use are implicit differentiation and the chain rule. So, so what we need to do is, so we're interested in, so at the end of the day, excuse me, we're interested in partial w partial z. And what we're going to do is use the chain rule to just take a straightforward partial derivative of our original uh, expression. So remember, w was x cubed y minus z t squared. And so let's just take a partial derivative of that in the z direction. So then we would get, so the partial derivative in the z direction of, of x cubed y is just 0. So that'll go away. And so we only have minus, we have a 2z t component. That's just because the partial derivative of z squared is, is 2z. And then we have another term, which is minus z squared and now we need to take the partial derivative of t in the z direction. So 
so, you know, oftentimes when we take uh, partial derivatives of one variable in terms of the other, then, uh, so oftentimes when we take partial derivatives with one variable in terms of the other, it's common to uh, it's common to think that the partial derivative of, of one variable in terms of the other is just zero because usually our variables are independent. They don't vary in terms of one another. But this is exactly a situation where t does vary uh, depending on z, and so we had to include that into our notation. Okay. So, so now this is almost what we want, except we have this mystery component here. And of course, there's only one way we can solve this mystery, which is the same way we solved it in part a. We have to use the constraint. So now what happens if we take... Uh, the partial, so let's take partial, partial z of our constraint equation. And remember, our constraint equation was x, y equals z, t. Okay. So if we, if we take the partial derivative of this equation, so if I take the partial derivative of x and y in terms of z, then I uh, do get uh, 0 because x and y are genuinely independent uh, from, uh, from z. It's only t that depends on, on z. So on this side, we get 0. And now on the other side, I just need to use the, the product rule. So I get, uh, I get uh, t plus z uh, partial t partial z. Okay, so we can rewrite this as saying that partial t partial z is minus t over z. Okay, now you might notice that, you know, this is very formally very similar to what we did in part A, and of course that's no, that's no surprise. Uh, when, we, when we are manipulating using uh, implicit differentiation and the chain rule, it's just a compact way of doing what we were doing with the total differentials. I mean, to me, the chain rule is a computation which you could prove by doing the corresponding thing with, uh, with um, total differentials. And so, so we get this same coefficient negative t over z, which you recall that we got from in part a. OK, so now we have, uh, once again, we have this two equations. And, uh, and we just can do substitution. So we get that partial w partial z is equal to uh, minus 2zt. And now, again, we get minus another minus uh, z cancels with the z squared. So we get plus zt. And so we get. Uh, minus zt. Okay, and finally, uh, if we remember our assumptions, our assumptions were that x and y were, uh, were independent of z. That was our notation. And we used that assumption at this step right here. So in fact, we don't just have the partial derivative of w with respect to z. Uh, we need to specify that we held x and y fixed. Okay, so, so just to review again, if we look now at what we did in part B, um, you know, the meat of the argument was the exact same as what we did in part A. The meat of the argument was right here. We just we took some derivative, and then this was an unknown. Uh, w, the, the definition of W doesn't know how T and Z depend on one another. That you can only find by looking at the constraint. And so uh, we uh, just went through the problem, and we found uh, we, we took derivatives of the constraint, and that gave us an equation that we were looking for. Now, if we go back to, uh, if we go back now to part A, over here, then, uh, so, so as, as you can see, there was a lot more work involved in part A. On the other hand, to me, it was more straightforward. We just had to compute the total dif differentials, and then do some linear algebra with, with cancellations. 
And, and somehow when you do total differentials, you just compute everything that could possibly come up and then you just substitute it in. And uh, in, indeed we got the same answer, partial w, uh, partial z is being minus ct. Okay, and I think I'll stop there. <laughs>